used to be a national badminton player and um, so you've always been very different from the people around you right and you've not chosen the most conventional path to anything that you're doing but then there is another conventional journey uh, as a part of my life which is you know you come from a south indian brahmin family and you got to do your engineering and the medicine and all that also right so so uh, so you're trying to balance between the two you're trying to study and all that so i eventually ended up joining uh, engineering um, here in rdc and you i was still playing and you're still very different in the ways that you're looking at things right so one good thing about uh, always having something which is beyond your conventional identity is that it gives you a unique perspective to everything that you're doing right and uh, one thing that you also know is that if you uh, know something that you want to do you will be able to do and hard work will always get you there right so while you're juggling between the two identities or which one do I really take the conventional or the, uh, un, um, or the unconventional or the conventional one you're you, you know at some point I think you've got to be bold enough to step out of your comfort zone right I mean that's what it really is and the last uh, eight nine years mostly that's what I've done I started off as an engineer uh, with Fidelity Investments and from there I moved on to doing multiple things I joined Intox which is a partner company here uh, in India and at that point it's not like I knew what TED was really about and you know you just died in there thinking that it's a space that's unexplored in India and uh, it's something that young India really needs and you want to see how you can be a part of the transformation, right? Sometimes it's important not to really ask, uh, oh, do I have the skills for it or do this, does this really interest me or uh, what do I really bring to the table to make this successful? You don't ask yourself uh, these questions that you normally do. I think it's a good thing if you don't ask too many questions to yourself and you just like the people that you're going to work with and you're going to be doing something very different. And that's what I did uh, eight years ago. Uh, I didn't want to be in another engineer or brick in the wall uh, per se. So I, I dived into doing that. It was very interesting. And at that point, that's what I was looking at. You know, you're meeting these amazing technologists and entrepreneurs and designers and all kinds of people from all walks of life. It was amazing. At some point, you know, while it was very inspiring, I wanted to see, you know, how can I be a part of some of these stories? And that's when I really forayed into the startup ecosystem, trying to see what are people really doing. So I started off as EIR with GSF, which is a um, startup accelerator. And from there on, I've mostly been in the startup uh, ecosystem. And, you know, <clears throat> you're working with startups, trying to help them uh, with, you know, growth and marketing and connections and whatever that they need. And eventually moved to the other side of the table with uh, 500 startups. Uh, now I'm in venture capital, uh, still getting to work with early stage uh, founders, uh, and of course, in a different capacity. And, and I've really, really loved it. I think, uh, uh, you know, if I were to be an entrepreneur or if I were to run my own organization, uh, I'm the kind of person who doesn't score feed. Okay, so it's about you you got to build your own thing, right? And no one's going to handhold you. No one's going to teach you how to do things. You got to learn it yourself. So I think that's how I would, uh, I would build a team or let the people that I work with do. Uh, basically, what you're saying is, you know, build your own story, right? And with your own perspective and with your own um, thoughts and ideas around whatever whatever that you're doing, right? And that's how I have been for myself. So even just taking 500 startups, you know, the last uh, uh, two and a half years, I've been single-handedly managing 500, right? And it's not like anybody told you, hey, you know, you need to be doing investing this way, or this is the kind of entrepreneurs you need to be looking for, right? You self-learn, uh, and of course you make mistakes. and um fortunately I had a team which always backed me for it but you know you you have to write your own story you got to figure out how you're going to go get deals you're going to figure out how you're going to build your own identity you're going to figure out the kind of investors that you want to work with and you're going to figure out the kind of entrepreneurs that you need to work so i think a big part of uh, the kind of leader that i am uh, is where you know you self learn uh, and you build your own story right and uh, if I were to have a team, I think it have something very simple, right? As, as simple as that saying, hey, you got to build your own thing. No one's going to spoon feed you or can't hold you. And I think that's the best way for all of us to learn, right? right. And that's how we really emerge as leaders in whatever we are building when you uh, are able to take a leap of faith for yourself and take a bet on and chance on yourself. So. I think the person outside of work is... Um, is crazy and fun. Uh, that's what I would like to think. And um, so I've also been an artist. I've been always uh, painting for for a really long time. But I go in 
like spikes. I paint for like two years, go crazy with like 20 canvases at home and then nothing for like four years. So, uh, but I've been doing that for the last 15, 20 years uh, where uh, I've been, uh, I paint a lot and I, I like doing, um, there's a particular form of painting that you do with a knife. Uh, it's called knife painting and uh, it's called impressionism and that's what I do. And uh, I haven't painted the last two, three years, I think. But uh, but yeah, that's something that I do when I uh, uh, when I paint. I feel like I am really managing my energy, and it really keeps me calm. Meaning, I'm very very impatient as a person, right? And painting needs a lot of patience, right? And I can see how that molds molds me itself. And um, so I, I love painting and that's something that I do to like really calm myself. Um, so I think I've been the calmest self right now. So that's why I haven't gone back to painting, I guess. But uh, but I love painting. And uh, I also do, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I play badminton. Uh, so which again has not been the most regular thing whenever I get time. Um, so I play at Bangalore Club and, you know, uh, and then Cosmopolitan Club. I have a few friends that I play regularly with. I have a bunch of people that I play. I love, I love playing uh, and I think it really takes your mind off from the work and all the madness that's around uh, around it right so so yeah i think uh, for more for my creative juices flowing i have you know painting once in a way of course i write which i mentioned uh, earlier as well and then of course this um, you know breaking a sweat is always helpful to be you know in the best uh, physical uh, shape <laughs> The things that I've been constantly advocating uh, for everyone, not just women, uh, for everyone is, you know, how do you really think about identity capital right from the beginning, right? Since the time that you're 18 or 21. Uh, there are a lot of things I wish I did, uh, I didn't. Uh, you know, it was a much uh, later realization that I had. But how can we really build our identity capital? And a lot of that comes with taking the most crazy journey, right? Uh, and not ask too many questions of where is this really going to take you, right? And, and just jump with it and dive.